Our guest has been working in voiceover, film and television, and theater for decades. His comedic chops shine in shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm and The Crazy Ones. He gives an Oscar-winning performance in A Serious Man and in the Lake Bell indie feature, In a World. He does it all, he does it brilliantly, and we are so ready to get buzzed with the incredible Fred Melamed. Yes, indeed. What a Put it there. Florid, congratulatory <laughs> introduction that is. Very, extremely kind of you. I well, appreciate it. Well, it's all it. true. It was, it's a pleasure to do it. <laughs> you are you. so talented, and I was such. It was such a joy. Yeah. Just to read about you and absolutely. And, and you're a fellow New Yorker, so you know I. Got I am. It. It's I nice am. to have another New Yorker out here in LA. You, you notice so. we're both wearing black. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. You guys are the always old, wearing black. Yeah, the old joke. We it's were, a little we're warmer. Black. Uh, here than in New York right now. It is, especially now, yeah. Yes. We, yeah. we chose the right year to move out. Yes. Here. Yeah. We moved out here in May, my wife yeah. and my two boys and I. After many, many years of being an actor and a voiceover guy in New York, it's mm -hmm. a, we'll talk about this, I'm sure, at more length. Of course, length, we have questions for you. It's yeah. a so, different thing. So don't York, answer anything until yeah, we yeah. ask it. I'm sorry. <laughs> and if. <laughs> so bossy, Fred. Yeah, it's and true. if we forget to ask you something, then you can talk all you want. <laughs> Terrific. All right. Um, the, the cool, one of the cool things <laughs> is that we met Fred uh, for the first time in person a few months ago with, yes. uh, at our good friend uh, Joe Cipriano's. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, and we had a chance to talk to you, and you were such a nice guy. You know, you guys can't tell this because well, we're. Well, but we've also we've loved your work as well because we're huge Curb fans. Absolutely, and a serious man. I mean, the whole thing. So then it was like, oh wow, you know. But then we you thought, know sometimes everybody doesn't translate. No, we thought we were going to talk life, to Fred and so. go, "Hey, Fred," and he would be like, uh, "Yeah, who are you?" That's I don't want to talk to you, but he wasn't. You were so you were so cool and so nice. And then we said, "Hey, man, we'd love to have you on our show." And he's like, "Vo Buzz Weekly." I know it well. I'd love to I be know. on the show. Yes, like, I discovered it wow. and I enjoy it. I watch it. I see people Thank that I've never you. people that I've heard, but that I've never seen them yeah. and I've never heard them talk about what they do. I find it really interesting. I really do. So cool, man. Well, we know that you are unbelievably swamped. You're traveling all over the place, working all over the world. He is. Don't tell him. He will tell you. He'll tell you different, but it's true. Um, and uh, and we know that you know you took time off to come here and and, and share with us and all of them. So we really appreciate. It. Thanks, yes, man. Thank it's you. my great pleasure, truly. Beautiful, beautiful. So what do you say we get in there and start asking some questions Let's here? Go. Oh, he's picking up the card. When he reveal, picks up the card, we're going Fred. to reveal <laughs> your <laughs> life. Oh my God. So check this out. You, uh, <laughs> you're a classically trained actor by way of uh, uh, Hampshire College and Yale School of Drama, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, how did you, give us a little bit of that background, and then how did you find your way into voiceover? I knew about voiceovers, and I knew that if you were successful at them, it was very lucrative. It was a lot of money to be made. Yeah. So I said to my agent, uh, you know, I'd like to, I want to go and start doing voiceovers. And he said to me, well, let me tell you something. They don't want voices that are sonorous, beautiful voices. They want voices that cut through. Mm -hmm. That's what they want. Right. I said, well, just give me a chance. So he said, okay. So <laughs> I, went, I started auditioning, and in those days, this is in New York, of yeah. course, uh, there was no such thing as a home studio. No, you right. went, you schlepped around to the various ad agencies, yeah. uh, and you did your auditions. So kind of right out of the box, within about a month of starting, I got a really big account. I got uh, Conoco Oil, which at the time was a big yeah. oil company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then within about a year, I got Mercedes-Benz. Nice. And I was a kid. I was only, a, when I say a kid, I mean I was maybe 26 or something. You were a kid. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> he loved that. <laughs> that was great. But uh, did I- Did they give you a free car? Did they a, didn't, but actually yeah. I, did, I did stuff for a dealer and I did work out a deal. Okay, there you go. That's I did stuff for dealers saying. and they gave me a great deal on my car. <laughs> Not free, but. That's fantastic. So, so the you got some pretty this, big things right away. I did yeah. when I was, and, and I was lucky that I, you know, I kind of got stuff right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As you, as you've probably heard, as people at home have probably heard, there's kind of two main avenues that funnel people into voiceovers. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is coming from a radio background. Sure. Like our mutual friend Joe Cipriano, yeah. who was on the radio for years and years. Mm -hmm. uh, other friends of mine, Bill St. James. He's an East Coast guy. I don't know if you know him, Bill mm -hmm. St. Yeah, but we uh, Weaver, other people, Bo Weaver, many, many, many people. Yeah. Right. Um, and then uh, there are other people that come from the acting um, sort of side of things, right. like me, other mm -hmm. other people. Exactly. Any, anyway, so I started making, you know, significant money for a young. I was not married. I had no responsibilities. It was, you know, mm -hmm. it was great. <laughs> but um, I lost my desire to compete as an actor. Mm. Especially since I had had this, you know, very tough experience. Yeah. 
Uh, and I just continued to do that and kind of, there were a couple of casting directors. Uh, there's one particular woman called Julia Taylor who was Woody yeah. Allen's casting director yeah. Yeah. who yeah. liked me. And uh, if a movie would come up, uh, I wouldn't audition. I did, a, I did seven Woody Allen films. So she would just say, yeah. well, Woody has a thing. He wants you to play a psychiatrist. Are you interested? It's four days. Yeah. So I'd say, yeah, great. As long as I wouldn't have to audition, it was just it was a gimme. It was a, yeah, an yeah, offer, yeah. a straight offer. So that was so I continued to do a little <laughs> bit of stuff like that. I got spoiled. Well, I was going to say a little bit, spoiled brat, a little pampered, Fred. Yes, but my that's goodness okay. gracious. But I, but I paid a significant price. You yes. did, you did. Well, we Even didn't want though, you stressed out, so this is good. This is good. It was, but <laughs> but that continued. I continued to do nothing but voiceovers ex with an occasional parenthetic appearance in a Woody Allen mm -hmm. film or yeah. another, but small little things for twenty years. Wow. For a long, long, long time. Long time. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I, I sort of spread out a little bit in the voiceover world. Um, in New York, where I'm from, it's a much narrower field than it is here in California. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the uh, television production, not all, but uh, the vast majority of entertainment television production is done here yeah. as our movie trailers. Yeah. Really, the only stuff that's done in New York is advertising that is commercials, mm -hmm, both sure. radio and TV commercials, and then promos, but only promos that cover news and sports, yeah. which tend right. to be headquartered right. in New York. Yeah. So all the entertainment promos, which is the vast bulk of what's done in the promo world, is done here in yeah. California. So it was a, a, a much more defined, smaller pool of work, and a smaller pool of people that did most of the work yeah. mm -hmm. in New York. Exactly. So, and I came at it um, as an actor, uh, trying to kind of always not violate the boundaries of what's real in what I did. Yeah. So I wasn't a person, I, I would, you know, not do a lot of characters sometimes, but usually um, things closer to a real person. To what, yeah, to yeah. your but own. But to a real person with a kind of authority or a kind yeah. of, you know, a, a person with a certain style that's, that suited my voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that went on for, you know, many, many years. Yeah. 